today I'm going to show you what I think is by far the easiest way to create a handwritten title using Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. This video is massively inspired by my friend Serge. He has a fantastic video linked down in the description. I just wanted to add some extra flair at the very end. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, go ahead and select the Final Cut title. Coming over to the right side, it's going to be very important that you set the preset to whatever your typical video resolution is. So I'm going to set this to 4K. And it's also going to be very important that you set your frame rate to whatever your typical frame rate is. So I'll do 2398. If you don't do this, you can cause some weird glitches with the end effect. Go ahead and leave your duration as whatever you like. I'm going to leave it at 10 seconds and push open. Click and drag to delete your title background and type text here. Then we're gonna push T to get the text tool and we're gonna click and drag to create a large text box. Jumping to the top left, we can go into our inspector and we're going to set our vertical alignment to the middle and set our alignment to the middle. So now our text should show up directly in the center. However, this box is slightly off because I'm not perfect. So jump on over into your properties and we're gonna click on the position, this down arrow to reset the parameters so everything should be directly in the center. From there, we're gonna write the text that we want to write. So I'm just gonna write subscribe. After that, jumping into our titles, we can go ahead and scale this up. For this effect to work to its max potential, I'm gonna recommend that you actually drag out the tracking just so that none of the letters are touching. So now that we have our text in place, let's go ahead and animate it drawing on. Come down to underneath your viewer and select the paintbrush tool. You can also get that with P. Then go to the top right and select your HUD. Your HUD is gonna have some additional options for your paintbrush tool, such as setting the width of your paintbrush tool and pen pressure, pen speed, all of that. What we want is to drag up our width so that it covers an entire letter at its thickest point. So we'll go ahead and keep dragging that up until it covers it up nicely. Now it's gonna be important that you don't go too large because you don't wanna accidentally start writing on another letter before you are ready. So I'm setting mine to 96 pixels. You're also gonna wanna make sure that write on is enabled right here and smoothing is enabled. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start writing. All you're gonna do is click and drag and in one smooth motion, draw all the way through your letters. Now, rather than releasing the mouse, you're gonna need to leave it fully connected the entire time. Now that I've drawn all the way through, I can release the mouse. Now it's gonna look like nothing happened if you're on the first frame, but if you drag through, you should be able to see all of your writing happen over the top of the text. Now you're gonna notice that I missed a few little edges and corners here. So what we can do is select our arrow tool and then double click on the red paintbrush. Now I can actually zoom in with command plus and click and drag these different points so that the letters are fully covered up with my writing. Now it might be that in some areas I need to actually increase the size of the brush so we can go ahead and actually just drag up the width even a little bit more. If you need it beyond that 100 mark, you can actually go to the left side, find the width and you can click and drag here and that will let you go beyond that 100. Okay, so everything seems to be covered up nicely. Let's go ahead and have this actually write onto the text. So selecting our subscribe text, right click and select add image mask. Now we're gonna drag our paint stroke into this well. That's basically gonna tell Apple Motion that wherever this paintbrush is, is wherever this text should be revealed. So if we go back to the beginning, we can actually see that our letters are writing on really nicely. Now you might notice that I accidentally got a little bit too far on the eye here. Again, that's a very easy fix. We we can select our paintbrush. We can actually select some of these points and drag them away so that they aren't writing on our eye a little bit too early. So now let's say we want to speed up the animation. Well, we can locate our write on animation behavior, click and drag from the right side, and we can shorten that down so that the animation is nice and fast. Now that we've done that, we can actually go into the write on settings and we have a bunch of extra parameters that we can play around with. Some of which are stuff like draw and erase, which is really fun because it'll draw all the text on and then it'll erase it at the end. We can change the stroke length. So if we want it to only write on part of the letters and then erase as it goes, you can do that as well. Another option that's really nice is we can change the direction that it's written on, plus we can change the speed. So if we want it to be more of an ease both, so it starts off slow, speeds up, and then eases back down to the end, you can do just that. So those are some really great options in the write on parameter. But there's one last thing I wanna do to add some more character to this text. Because it's being written on, it's almost like it's a stop motion. And I wanna emulate that stop motion effect. So to do that, we're gonna select our text here. 
we're gonna jump up into the behaviors. And we're gonna locate the text continuous. Go ahead and select quiver. So now this text will be actually kind of shaking. If we want, we can actually drag up some of the parameters under the, the quiver options to give us more shake. I also like to set this to add and subtract to give me even more variation in the shaking. So now that it's quivering, it's a little bit too smooth for my taste. So let's go ahead and set this to a stop motion look. We're actually gonna need to apply this group into another group. So right click and select group. So now that group is within a new group. This group is gonna be our stop motion. I'm gonna call this the group strobe. Then we're gonna jump up into our filters and we're gonna locate the time filter and select strobe. This is now gonna set that text to 15 frames per second. So if I play through, you can see it's a little bit more jagged. Let's go ahead and drop this down all the way to eight frames per second. Perfect, our text is being written on as if it were stop motion. So how do we get this into Final Cut Pro? Well, you have a couple options. One is to export a movie file. You could go up to your share options here in the top right, select export movie, jump into your settings, and you're gonna wanna change it from H.264 over to Apple ProRes 4444, then change the color channels from color over to color and alpha. This is gonna give you a very large video file, but it will have an alpha channel that you can apply into anything you want. But if you want a really small file, size, you could actually publish this directly into Final Cut Pro. To do that, go ahead and push Command S, and that is why we created the Final Cut title at the beginning. Then just label this whatever you want, set it in a category that you like. I'll just throw this into Tutorials, and then we'll push Publish. Now if we open up Final Cut Pro, we can locate our titles and our category and drag that onto our timeline. And now you'll see that this video has that title. If you wanna move it, you're gonna to need to select the transform tool to move it around, and then you can of course scale it down. So we could scale it down to the bottom left-hand corner, just like so. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.